Here we go, round one. Nelson holding both hands very, very high, as well he might, because uh, Laporte is famous for his punching power. Zuma Nelson in the goal. Laporte once scored a, a one-punch knockout over Rocky Lockridge, the man who knocked out Barry Michael for the uh, World Junior Lightweight title, the IBF version. So Azuma Nelson has seen that fight and he's very, very aware of the danger that uh, that Juan Laporte carries in both hands. First of 12 scheduled three-minute rounds. American Laporte. Ghanaian Azuma Nelson defending his crown. <laughs> the bang, drums banging in the background as Azuma Nelson bangs away to one line. Laporte's body comes up with the left hook to the chin. Fairly cautious start by Azuma Nelson so far. In his previous fight against Burnell Whitaker for the World Lightweight title, he, can, he charged from his corner, ran. So oh! The, the initial punch was a beauty, but then he seemed to throw him to the canvas. Well, almost, Nelson, almost a Cumberland throw in Australian uh, terminology. Nelson was smiling when he hit the canvas, but he certainly wasn't smiling when that right hand of Juan Laporte hit the mark. Nelson will have to be very careful, especially in these early rounds, because this is when Juan Laporte is so dangerous. The jab of Azuma Nelson, that's a great punch for him, the jab and left hook, his two best shots. Well, Nelson's caught a couple of punches on the chin in this round. Laporte big right, big right by Laporte over the top of Nelson's head. His two claims to uh, greatness, Laporte, the big punch that he packs, and that uh, that solid chin. Recently, uh, KO Magazine in America said that Juan Laporte had the best chin in boxing at the moment, which is uh, which is some big rap, believe me. And uh, they've also rated him as being one of the hardest punching featherweights of the, of the last 20 years. So certainly, both guys have formidable reputations going into this fight. Already, we've seen the power of Laporte. We're now starting we, to see the speed, yeah. too, of uh, Azuma Nelson. Those spindly legs, those almost tiny legs, dancing around as the bell sounds for the end of round one. There's that big right hand, and Azuma Nelson was really rocked by that. Laporte tried to finish it with the left hook there and threw the man down. That was a big punch from Juan Laporte, and that was a pretty good judo throw there. Some people here thought it was a knockdown, but it certainly wasn't a knockdown. It was a great right hand by Laporte, but then he actually, uh, Grantly called it a judo throw. It was something like that that flung the champion to the canvas. We're in the opening seconds of the second round. Nelson and Laporte. Oh, go for it. Good way. Great. Great box. Nelson holding his hands very, very high. He's felt one right hand. He doesn't want to feel too many more. Nelson has a reputation of uh, really fighting only as hard as, as he has to. He uh, he seems to rise to the to the occasion when uh, when demanded. When he's put under pressure, that's when he fights at his best. Certainly, Laporte has put him under some pressure in that first round, and he's trying to put him under a lot more in round number two. He's so fast with his hands, though, Nelson, but Laporte is tentative coming in because he knows just how quick the counter punches are from this little black African. The jab of Azuma Nelson snaking out against his sparring partners. He, uh, he's really been toying with his sparring partners since he's been in Sydney. He's been dancing rings around them, just concentrating on making them miss, and that's uh, what he's trying to do with Juan Laporte right now. He's trying to make him miss with that right hand so he can counter punch with the left hook over the top. He's carrying, 
Nelson's carrying the left hand very, very low, trying to draw in Laporte to throw that right hand as the drum starts sounding again in the background. They stopped midway through the first just for a brief moment when Nelson was flung to the canvas. That jab again by Nelson. Rapier-like jab. Well, Laporte has to force the fight. If he wants to take the world title from Nelson, he has to start forcing the issue, as he did in the first round. Because if he hangs back and lets Nelson start to find the range of that left hand, Nelson's going to hit the mark every time. Nelson jabbing and then in and out and away. Laporte just trying to get that punch in that's going to put the champion away. Some felt that maybe it had been landed midway through the first round. It was a great punch. Well, this early in the fight, we already see the, the, the difference in speed between the two guys. Nelson is just that gear quicker than Laporte, and he's uh, in this second round, he's starting to showboat a little bit, but he doesn't want to get too careless. Well, he's trying to draw Laporte in so he can counter punch him. And Laporte, believe me, is well aware of that tactic. He wants, he wants Nelson to lead up. Nelson misses with a big wild right hand. Zuma letting go with a couple and then ricocheting off. Bell sounding the start of round three. Nelson missing badly, but you, you saw the speed of the man. He was away from the travel zone very quickly. In training, uh, Nelson really just concentrated on defence throughout his preparation for this fight. His timing does seem to be a little bit out early in the fight, but uh, I'm sure that'll come good as we progress. Certainly, he's still adept at making Laporte miss, but his counter punches are just a little off target. Good punch underneath by Nelson as he came in, but they clinch. Blistering speed from the champion. Juan Laporte trying to get off a punch that uh, might slow him down just for a moment. Gonna stay there. Remain purposeful. Wait for that moment. Hope that it comes. At the moment, the champion dancing, probing, showing tremendous uh, skills of elusiveness. Both guys really are, are so wary of, of, of the other. Neither is, uh, is keen to open up because of the opportunities it presents for the other man. We see Laporte, he's really tentative to throw that right hand. Because he knows if it misses, and Nelson is so adept at, at making a man miss that a screaming left hook will come straight back at him. So we really we're seeing a bit of a Mexican standoff at the moment. One guy waiting for the other guy to unload. Nelson dancing around the ring. This is his third lap. He really is a class actor, Zuma Nelson, when he gets up on those toes. He's always been a brilliant boxer, but what we haven't seen so far, uh, that we've seen in many Nelson fights previous to this, is that ferocious aggression of his. He's, he's not called the mighty warrior for nothing. And when he decides to unload, Juan Laporte will know that he's, uh, he's in there with perhaps the best fighter that he's ever faced. And Laporte has faced so many great ones. Chavez, McGuigan, Sanchez. Certainly Nelson up there with the very, very best fighters in the world today. Ten Jose, seconds of round three remaining. Jose Buffalo Martin in the corner of Nelson, telling him, let's go, baby, let's work, let's work. Both those jabs from Nelson, they found the mark. There's the end of round three. Grantley Keezer from the uh, Telegraph Mirror Group, the News Limited group here, one of our leading boxing uh, enthusiast and... Uh, well, it's, a, it's actually the Fist now, Ray. I've taken over the Fist magazine. Telegra the that's telegraph another, <laughs> another magazine you've taken over. 
but certainly one of the uh, leading authorities on boxing here in Australia. Let's have a look at the card now that Grantley has at the moment. He's got Nelson 29, Laporte 28. I've given Nelson two rounds to uh, the first round for Laporte, but uh, so oh, good punch. the fight is anybody still at this stage. Neither guy really gaining the upper hand. Laporte showed that left hook, but he's, uh, he's in here to win this fight. Now Nelson's showboating, doing a lot of little fancy tricks. He's trying to get Laporte to lead off first so he can counter, but Laporte is very hesitant. Of course, Ray, this is uh, only one of the many, many great fights that we're going to see on Sky Channel this month. We spoke earlier about the Mark County Hunter, Jose Flores fight. Well, of course, on October 26th, we've got uh, Holy Field against Buster Douglas for the Heavyweight Championship of the World, and you'll see that live and exclusive on Sky Channel. So they work in close, and Nelson... Oh, good left underneath by Laporte. Laporte, Laporte has come here to knock out Azuma Nelson and in round number four, he's, uh, he's trying to put him together. Nelson having to hang on, Nelson goes back to the edge and Laporte out of weight. Laporte coming on strong. This is the moment for one Laporte, he's got Nelson back against the ropes. Nelson fighting his way off though, he's hanging on in there, getting a breather. This hasn't been a great round for Azuma and Nelson. He looked good when he was on his toes dancing around, but a couple of left hooks from Juan Laporte and a big one underneath have changed the tune. Laporte misses with the payoff punch, the big right hand over the top. So Azuma comes back and lands uh, lefts and rights underneath, none of them really scoring. Most of them landing back around the kidney area, but it was the big left underneath that I called to you that started that flurry from Laporte. Nelson looks okay now. He's got that jab working pretty well, but Laporte always looks ominous. If he could just lift his game a gear, I'm sure he would have Nelson in a great deal of trouble. His problem has been he connects with a big one and Nelson is just a little more ring wise and a little quicker. He's able to get out of danger. Certainly Jeff Fennick will be encouraged by what he's seen in this fourth round though. There's the bell, the end of round four. A good round for Laporte. Let's have a look at Juan Laporte working hard underneath. Missed with that big right hand under, over the top, but a big left landed underneath. That was the punch. The left down below. Round five. Nothing in this title bout for the WBC super featherweight. Good left by Nelson as Laporte came in. Very fast with his hands, Azuma Nelson, but he's not chasing the way that he did in his last fight against Pernell Whitaker. He's standing and he wants Laporte to come to him. <laughs> they really do have a great deal of regard for each other, these guys, apologising for a little infringement there. Goodness me, I don't think you would see Jeff Fennick doing that, touching each other on the chest almost with affection. Great deal of respect these guys have for each other, and you can see them eyeing each other off, one weary of the other's power. And well, they might be, because so far in this fight, both have shown terrific power in both hands. There goes that big left from Laporte underneath again, looking to score a similar punch to the one that landed in round four. And again, almost a silent apology from Laporte for an infringement. The tempo of this fifth round has slowed. But it's only because of the very fast fourth round. Having said that, Azuma Nelson tries to land that big overhand right. He's got the jab working again. Buck Lomartin in the corner of Nelson screaming out work Azuma, let's go baby, but Nelson still tentative. 
He's tasted a couple of bombs from Laporte and he doesn't want to taste any more. He's got those hands very, very high. I'd like to see Nelson lift his work rate. I, I know what this guy is capable of, and so far he really hasn't produced the, the dazzling power and speed that we've seen in, in previous bouts, but that's only because of the, the great regard he has for the power of Juan Laporte. A real craftsman, Azuma Nelson, but he's got one hell of a fight on his hands here. He certainly can't do with Juan Laporte what he would like to do. He can't bamboozle him with that jab because uh, every time he gets a little bit cocky, Azuma, he gets a right hand or a big left underneath. Oh, and this is what he was doing in training, leaping into the air and, uh, and uh, shooting out that left hand. But he doesn't want to get careless, Azuma. It really would be a, a great tragedy to see uh, this great man hit the canvas simply because of his recklessness. He's putting on a show now for the Sydney fans and for Jeff Fennick sitting at ringside. End of round five. Seconds out as we come back live. Round six. Nelson just had a look down here at our commentary position, Ray, as if to say, well, what do you think about me so far? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'd be more worried about what Juan Laporte thinks about him uh, if I was Nelson, because uh, he really can't afford to get cocky as well. We know he's a great boxer, but uh, it only takes one shot from Juan Laporte, and uh, it could be curtains for this little man from Africa. I get the impression, Grantly, that Laporte has remained online with what they've worked for to come to this fight. He's, he's remained purposeful. Yes, he's done nothing. He's done nothing careless. He's uh, almost been a little robotic in, in, in his method. But there's obviously a, a, a fight plan there, and that's to just set Nelson up, just wait for him to make a mistake, wait for him to get cocky, and pop that right hand on his chin. And you can see Juan Laporte. He's almost looking down the gun barrel, staring over that left hand of his, trying to load up on the right hand to drop it over the top of Nelson's left. <laughs> A left hand has scored. <laughs> now Jose Buffalo Martinez is, is yelling at Laporte, he's a, his adversary, come on Laporte, walk up on him. He's almost telling Laporte how to fight Nelson. He wants Nelson to throw more punches. <laughs> Laporte getting frustrated, that one straight a little low. He's getting frustrated by the speed of Azuma Nelson. Buffalo Martin is yelling out, beautiful baby, dance, dance. Obviously, Azuma thinking about uh, what he's going to do on the on the disco floor at his victory party, but there's a long way to go and a lot of right hands from Juan Laporte before before any victory for Azuma Nelson. I'd be throwing a lot more punches if I was the African world champ. of concern on Azuma Nelson. A look of frustration on the face of Laporte. He, certainly, certainly is. He looks like a kid uh, in a candy shop and he's been told, <laughs> don't, don't put your hand in the cupboard. Well, he can only go so far, Ray. That's the problem. He's reaching out, but he just can't get to the, to the goodies. And that's the chin of Azuma Nelson because uh, every time he sticks out that left hand, Azuma's chin is about six inches away from him. He wants the biggest lump of candy on the back shelf and it takes a long reach to do it. <laughs> Now he gets him in close. He lets go with lefts and rights. Big bombs, but Nelson comes back. Laporta, hoping to get one on the chin of Nelson. Nelson's uh, trainer, not very impressed with Nelson at the moment, let me tell you. A look of concern on the corner of Azuma's tournament. Blood on the towel. Maybe from a nick under that eye, I'm not sure. Yes, just a little nick under the right eye. More of a superficial wound, though, more of a graze. Yes, it is. It, it doesn't look like a dangerous wound, but uh, once you see blood in boxing, it's... Uh, it, it can be like blood to a shark as far as Juan Laporte is concerned, and certainly he'll be encouraged by the sight of blood on the face of the mighty warrior of Ghana. Start of round seven. Not much in this fight. If anything, Nelson by a touch. 
Good right hand right. from Nelson Landon. He's always looked the, the, the faster and more classy boxer as him and Nelson, but uh, every time he gets a little careless and reckless, Juan Laporte is there to show him just who the big slugger is in that ring tonight. Let's have a look at Keyser's card. That's the end of six. He's got Nelson in front by a point. As you say, Ray, not a great de deal in this fight. Azuma Nelson showing his class, but uh, certainly Juan Laporte has landed enough big shots in, in this fight so far through the first six rounds to make it very, very competitive. It wouldn't surprise me if some judges would have Azuma Nelson much more in front than a point, but I agree with you, there's nothing in this, not a struck match in it. Well, Nelson uh, certainly has shown that he is a brilliant, brilliant boxer, but Laporte is, is, is the man forcing the issue, and the, the, the fans are getting a little frustrated now with Nelson constantly walking away, they want to see him throw punches, they know what the guy is capable of, he's, he is one of the most exciting fighters in the world when he starts to open up, but he has so much respect for the punching power of Juan Laporte that he's not prepared to really have a go as we've seen in his previous bouts and already there's people at ringside there's a few hecklers here saying that Fennec will break you in half and they're shouting they're starting to chant Fennec, Fennec behind him I'm not sure that these two these two fellows are breakable, there you go <laughs> yeah. well you know um I get the feeling that Azuma Nelson is already counting the million dollar payday that he's going to get against Jeff Bennett and he's not going to risk anything, he just wants to steal his fight on points, conserve his energy, conserve his strength and power and really let it all hang out against oh! Nelson comes back and smiles at him. Laporte always looks dangerous with that right hand, but Nelson rode that one out and he's the one back throwing the punches. Laporte has to throw more punches if he wants to win this fight. He's thrown some big stuff, but not, not enough of it, I feel, to be ahead at this stage. Well, it doesn't matter which one of the two fighters Fennec does face, it's going to be a crowded house. Oh, yeah. Will the power and the, and the strength of Jeff Fennec be enough to cut the, the legs from this African? A lot of people at ringside certainly believe that they will be. The end of seven. Let's have a look at this. This could be the big ride it was. And as I thought, that first ride did get through, but then Nelson is able to show some tremendous evasion, and then he comes out of this very cheekily and just glares at him. Here's the ride again, that one. Eighth round coming up, the title fight. This man, Laporte, the underdog, the challenger, just behind on points. Azuma Nelson, an, an artist in the ring. Juan Laporte, the man with the strength, the physique, the solidarity, but he certainly hasn't got the, the swiftness. And he's just got to hope that he gets off a lucky shot. Having seen Nelson train uh, in the last two weeks and having seen many of these fights, Ray, I really do feel that he has so much more in store that he's not showing here tonight. And, uh, I just get the feeling that he, he doesn't want to risk defeat he, by any by any chance, and uh, he, he's really just concentrating on that fight with Bennett. As you say, he's an artist of the ring, but we've also seen him as a very, very skilled surgeon, and we're not seeing that so far in the fight. Only in flashes do we see that great hand speed. We said earlier at the, t at the top of the show that Nelson really is a, an enigmatic character. He really only fights as hard as he has to to win each fight. He can sometimes get away with close to decisions over mediocre opponents and then come out when he's put under pressure and blitz absolute great fighters. Well, let me ask you this question, Grantley, with your, um, with your wealth of knowledge on the fight game. Fennec has fought some, some very handy fighters. He must have to take titles off yes. them. Doesn't matter which one of these two, is that going to be his toughest fight? I believe it will be. I believe uh, the, the way I see the fight so far, Zuma Nelson is going to get away with a decision at this stage of the fight. And uh, I believe that uh, 
Nelson really will lift his game against Fennec because he'll be made to. Fennec won't hang back like Laporte because Fennec has a has a greater variety of attack than Laporte. Fennec also might try to bully him a bit exactly more too. Exactly right. He'll be forcing he'll be forcing Nelson and making him throw punches back, and that's what? when you'll see Nelson at his back uh, at, at his very best when he's backed up. Oh! Just when you think you've, uh, you've got him and he's hurt, he's not. <laughs> well, I think he was a little off balance there. He was certainly bouncing back. The Porto managed to get through with a big straight one on his chin, and that, uh, that put him more off balance. The Porto has shown some many encouraging signs throughout this fight, but he hasn't been able to press on the advantage largely because of that punch that Nelson is throwing now, that straight left hand. The Porto's corner, they're calling for him to go after him now. These fans, they don't want to see Nelson show vote. They're used to seeing Fennec break people. They want to see him get up and have a go. They want to see him roar into Laporte. Couple of good punches by Laporte. And the jab working again for Azuma. Oh, good right hand there by Azuma Nelson. It's about time he put one behind the jab. He's throwing plenty of jabs. <laughs> There's the bell. Let's see this left hand by Laporte. It definitely landed, but it seemed to get Azuma while he was off balance, and he just simply let himself roll back towards the ropes. Another angle on it. It was a good punch, and he started showboating only one second later. Bill Benton in the corner of Juan Laporte, imploring his man to put force the issue with the Zuma Nelson. Something really Laporte hasn't done throughout this fight. He's landed some good right hands, but uh, if he wants to win this fight, he's got to start bustling the Zuma Nelson. He's got to start walking forward, start pumping out the, his own left hand and trying to nail him with the right hand. He's, he's really got to start throwing some big right hands over the top. He can't expect to win this fight by hang, hanging back because Nelson is, is going to stay away all night long behind that long left hand. Early seconds of the ninth round on Sky Channel around Australia. Selected outlets taking in the title fight between Azuma Nelson and Juan Laporte. Right over the top by Nelson, just missed the mark. He'd be in front on points. Not by as many as some might think though. And this fight is certainly not yet in the bag for Azuma Nelson. On my scorecard, he's got still a lot of work to do if he wants to win this decision, and uh, he's got to stay away from that powerful right hand of Wilder. Certainly, the corner of Azuma Nelson haven't been thrilled with his performance tonight. His, his trainer and manager, Butlo Martino, over there, has been hammering his hand on the canvas. He had a very, very sore hand by this stage, telling Nelson to, to have a go. Oh, 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 big right hand over the top, that one hit the button. Saw the sweat fly from the head of the little African. Well, this is the kind of fireworks the fans have been expecting all night, but they've, they've really only seen it in flashes so far. And it all depends on one Laporte. He's the man that's got to force the, force the issue. Oh, Laporte, I think, may have lost his footing. Well, he lost his footing.
Well, he might be. Let's have a look at Laporte pouring the pressure on. Traps Nelson against the ropes and goes for broke. A couple of big right hands over front, the left hook. Goodness me, if one of those had hit Nelson flush on the chin. I don't know if Nelson would have seen that round out, but they were big shots at, that Laporte was. Oh, look at the power that Laporte was putting into those combinations. Goodness me, the right hand over the top, but Nelson did very, very well to dry those ones out. He with a big uppercut there. We come back live, the start of round 10. Will Laporte pick it up where he left it off? Nelson, the first to land a rally of punches. Let's have a look at Grantley's card. Still, he's got Nelson in front by a point. Three rounds to go. The judges, of course, tonight, Ray, two Australians, Gus Mercurio and Eddie Francis, and, of course, an American, Herbert Min. The referee is Malcolm Bulner. Hasn't had a great deal of work to do, to do tonight, Malcolm Bulner, in only his second WBC title fight. That's because these guys are so, so professional. And again, it's the left hand of Azuma Nelson snaking out. He seems to be back to his boxing best, sticking out the left hand, but goodness me, he did get a big shock in round number nine. We saw Nelson rocked in the first round by a right hand, and in the ninth round again, it was Laporte pouring the pressure on behind those big, big shots that he throws. Bit more power in the punching of Azuma Nelson early in round 10. Azuma Nelson, of course, had a very hard fight in his last bout with Pernell Whitaker trying for the world lightweight title. It was a fer ferocious battle. Nelson was simply beaten by a man that was a little too quick and a little too big for him. Has that fight taken its toll? Certainly, Nelson has been rocked several times throughout this fight. This has not been one of his greatest performances, I'll tell you that. But part, the, the, the major part of that reason would have to be that Juan Laporte has been loading up on that right hand and finding the mark several times throughout this fight. Once again, though, Ray, Azuma Nelson, he's on the back move. He's sticking out that left hand. He's a very elusive target. Been a couple of occasions in the fight where you think he's in trouble, but suddenly he bounces back. He loses his footing again in that slippery corner, his own corner. Goodness me, these guys really are gentlemen boxers, aren't they? It's almost like the gentleman gym days in there. I don't know if, uh, if an opponent slipped against Jeff Finnick, whether they'd get a little pat on the head. Laporte just, Laporte just isn't quick enough to press home the advantage against Nelson. Very rarely is he able to get be, uh, get underneath that left hand to score the right hand over the top. When he does land the right hand, it's all it's it's all go. But uh, Nelson again controlling the tempo of this round. Couple of big lefts by Laporte, but Nelson comes back lefts and rights. Well, a lot of people didn't think Juan Laporte would still be here at this stage. They saw Azuma Nelson dazzling opponents in the gym. But Juan Laporte, full credit to him, he has really made a, a fight of this. He's forced the issue, certainly in these last couple of rounds. It's easy to see what's made him the champion that he is. Round 11 coming up. We're in the championship rounds now. Two rounds left to go. This is... Where well, Zuba Nelson has often done his best work. Uh, two of his last three fights have ended in the 12th round with spectacular knockouts. He knocked out Jim McDonnell in London, put Jim McDonnell in hospital with a flurry of bombs in the 12th round. And before that, uh, in Las Vegas last year, he, uh, he knocked out Mario Martinez, the man that put Jeff Fennick on the canvas. Well, he knocked him out in the 12th round in Las Vegas. So is Azuma Nelson saving his best to last? We're about to find out. <laughs> That really is a punishing punch, that straight left hand. Very hard for Laporte to get around it. A couple of good punches got through there for Laporte, but while he's getting two on the mark, Azuma just keeps building up points with that jab, jab, jab. No doubt he, uh, no doubt Nelson feels that that's all he has to do to win this fight, keep the left hand in Juan Laporte's face. He's doing a pretty good job at this stage of spearing out that left hand. I do get the impression, Ray, that Azuma Nelson is saving himself for Jeff Fennick. He's had a very long career, a lot of hard fights. Maybe he just doesn't want to extend himself too much in this fight for fear that uh, he won't have anything left for Fennick. 
because believe me, against Jeff Finnick, Azuma Nelson is going to have to be 100% fit and 100% of his, his great strength to beat the Maracle Mall. Now we're seeing some action midway through round 11. Nelson, a big smile on his face at this stage of the fight. Big smile came across his face. No doubt he feels that he's won, won this bout. He's beaming in there at the moment. Box brilliantly at times in this fight, Azuma Nelson. But as I say, I get the impression that uh, he's decided not to not to go 100% flat out, just to win the fight as he can. Under a minute remaining, second last round. So Nelson continues to assert his superiority and I think you're entitled to use that word because that's what it is. Juan Laporte has, <laughs> has to get a shot on him. He has to get the big punch in. Azuma Nelson is really starting to toy with Juan Laporte, but as we said throughout, he doesn't want to get careless, Azuma Nelson. He's got the hands down, sticking the chin out. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to get careless against this man. No doubt he feels that he's, he's stolen this fight on points and he's only got three and a bit minutes left to retain his world title. Oh, the left hand of Azuma Nelson. Very hard for Juan Laporte to counter. That's the end of round 11. Last round. Going into this last round, Ray, I've got to Zuma Nelson ahead 107 to 104. And of course, there's an unofficial scorecard, and uh, the job of adjudicating this bout rests with two Australians and a, a man from Hawaii. I'm sure that they would have a Zuma Nelson just out in front. But uh, a Zuma oh, lands the right hand there. But really, I don't think we've seen the best of a Zuma Nelson tonight. I feel that he can fight much, much better than this, and that he really has held himself in check. Well, if he can box a lot, lot better than you've seen tonight, then we're in, we're in for one hell of a fight. The boxing skills he's shown tonight, but he hasn't shown that savagery and that, and that determination and that, that sheer animal aggression that we've seen many times from Azuma Nelson. We've seen him blast opponents out with blazing hand speed. Tonight, he's been content to just spear out that left hand against Laporte and steal the decision. Laporte managing to get a couple of lefts through but as he did Azuma retaliated with twice the amount and that's really been the story of the fight he might be just flicking that left out but the fact is that the the face part of the glove is landing on the target area and I guess a ringside judge would have to tally it up as a punch well that's the way I'm scoring it Ray Laporte has landed the bigger punches and he's the man that's had Nelson in trouble on several occasions. Laporte has never really been in any great danger, but he's copped a lot of straight lefts in the face, flicking out like a, a snake's tongue. One minute and 15 seconds of the final round. And Juan Laporte realises that he's got about a minute to get a miracle punch off if he's to win this fight. Certainly Juan Laporte has won a lot of fans here. They're imploring him to have a go. They're imploring to chase Azuma Nelson. He's chasing, but he's a very hard man to catch, Azuma Nelson. When he wants to dance around and box around, he's a very hard man to know. This could be a tough one to score, Ray. The judges, maybe they do fancy the aggression and the power of Juan Laporte. Azuma Nelson has, been, has looked to be in trouble at several stages in this fight. I still feel they'll get away with the decision, but Juan Laporte has been dangerous right throughout. 20 seconds of the fight remaining. Nelson is smiling. Nelson is dancing. He's circling as Juan Laporte frustratingly goes after him in the dying seconds of the fight. Five seconds on our clock. Great final round, Ray. It's been a great final round. Nelson under pressure.
WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World, Azuma Nelson.